What's up, basketball fans? Welcome to the Vrach Report. It is time to talk about the Toronto Raptors who made a massive trade earlier today in which they sent Jalen McDaniels to the Sacramento Kings for a very, very intriguing player I like. But they also acquired a couple of picks in that trade as well. So I'm going to be discussing the trade details. I'm also going to be discussing the impact this could have on the Toronto Raptors and how this is an excellent deal and how this impacts the future of the Toronto Raptors. So if you're ready to watch this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wish to hit the subscribe button as well, that would be very much appreciated. So with that being said, Let's get into today's video. The full details of this trade are the Toronto Raptors send Jalen McDaniels to the Sacramento Kings and they receive Davion Mitchell, Sasha Vanzenkov, and the 45th overall pick in this year's second round in which they used to draft Jamal Sheed. Um, and they also apparently, I don't know if it's confirmed yet, the full details aren't out, but they apparently also re received the second round pick from the Portland Trail Blazers for next year's draft class which is absolutely massive because you consider where the Raptors are at the moment. You also consider where the Portland Trailblazers are. They're very likely to finish bottom five, bottom eight next year. So essentially, the Toronto Raptors get an early second round pick next year. And they'll have, I believe, their own second round pick as well, which makes it really intriguing, especially the way the drafts are done now with having that one day rest in between. We saw the amount of trades that went down and maybe the Raptors can move up in a very strong draft class next year as well. But let's talk about some of the players that the Toronto Raptors receive. Davion Mitchell, let's talk about him. When you talk about Davion Mitchell, even leading up to the draft, a lot of fans, a lot of people were saying how he is a prototypical Toronto Raptors type of player because he is such a good defensive player. Now, his career hasn't exactly panned out the way that a lot of fans have predicted. And the stats kind of display that as well, right? Like last season, he averaged only 5.3 points with the Kings. He had a spectacular rookie season in which he averaged almost 12 points. But after that, as you see season by season, his minutes have dropped and so has his point production as well. He averaged 1.3 rebounds, 1.9 assists per game. He shot the three-point ball a little bit better than the two previous seasons, although on very limited attempts, only 2.23 attempts per game, shot about 36%. And Overall, his field goal percentage wasn't bad at 45.2%. Only all of this in only 15 minutes a game. Now, he hasn't exactly lived up to the expectations ever placed on him when the Kings did draft Davion Mitchell, but I do want to see sometimes a, chain, a change of scenery really helps. And in this case, for the Toronto Raptors, they have really found their backup point guard. He's about to be 26 years old in next year, so he is a little bit older. It's not as if they're... Uh, trading for someone that's 22 years old. But also, I still am really high on Davion Mitchell. I truly believe this when I say this. He still can become a very, very good backup player. Maybe not the player that a lot of people had expected when the draft came around, but he still got potential, and it gives the Raptors something that they don't currently have is a lot more defense. A three-point shot could definitely be questioned, but this is a player the Raptors have absolutely loved. You can tell he was dangled in potential Pascal Siakam trade talks as well obviously along with the other guys, but we know it didn't go through. And the Raptors finally found their backup point guard in Davion Mitchell. Now let's take a look at his contract real quick here before we talk about the other piece that the Toronto Raptors received in this trade as well. Now going into next season will be his last contract. He will be hitting free agency and he's expected to make $6.4 million, which when you consider everything and just the way the contracts are handed out in the NBA, that is a really cheap deal. And I don't want to see if it doesn't work out, you can trade him. But look, it's a very reasonable contract. And there's absolutely no doubt if he absolutely shits the bed, excuse me, excuse my language. But next season, if he does, you have the potential to trade him very cheap contract. And I mean, you could do pretty much with what a lot of teams did, right? What they did with Jalen McDaniels. He wasn't even getting minutes and they got what they did for him. So I think someone like a Davion Mitchell should pan out. But in case he doesn't, it's a very reasonable contract. It doesn't exactly hurt the Raptors. Now let's talk about the other acquisition in this trade as well because I truly feel like he's going to have quite the impact on the Toronto Raptors. Now the other player is Sasha Venzenkov. This was a player that played in Europe a lot. And when he signed the contract with the Kings, he expected to get a lot more minutes and there's reports last season he wasn't happy with the amount of minutes he's getting. He feels like he could produce a lot more. He's a little bit older. He's not He's not exactly a young player, but he could be a nice piece for the Raptors. He's a 6'9", 225 uh, power forward. He shoots left. He, like I said, he's 28 years old. But when you look at the stats there, they may not be quite impressive, but keep in mind he only played 12 minutes last season with the Kings. Shot 44% from the field. His three-point shot is really good. He's a good three-point shooter on only 2.9 attempts. I do want to say he shot 37.5%. Free throw rate, again, very limited. 80% is good. His rebounds, 
assists 0.5, steals 0.5, 5.4 points per game. But his game is so much more than what the stats may display. And that is why I wanted to pull up the stats from his career in Europe. And taking a look at those stats here, it will kind of give you a better idea of what he has really accomplished in Europe. And I feel like if you're given more minutes with the Raptors squad, that clearly needs more size at the power forward position. We don't know what Chris Boucher's future will be with the Raptors. He's someone that should get really good minutes. And something I always constantly see is when you look at the type of coach we have, Darko, he's going to be getting minutes because he's someone that can play smart, high, high IQ basketball and also shoots the ball really well. But in terms of when you look at his stats, his last season in Europe, you saw, look, he shot 43.4% on 3.6 attempts per game. His free throws were good, uh, respectable. I don't, I don't want to say good, 74%. But the previous seasons, he has shot 80 plus percent from the free throw line. Also averaged 6.1 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and 17 points per game. So I do want to say it is... With a lot of Europeans, especially lately, you get a lot of these talented forwards that are able to play basketball, but also do a lot of different things in terms of passing. You won't you won't necessarily see someone that's going to come in and be absolutely, you know, shooting like Steph Curry with, you know, seven, eight attempts per game, shooting 40 percent from the line. But they are able to do a little bit of everything. And I think that is the type of player that the Toronto Raptors honestly really, really need. And considering their forward depth isn't very great, you do have to take that into consideration as well. And let's quickly take a, take a look at his contract here before we end the video off. Now, similarly to Davion Mitchell, he's on a very reasonable contract. Anytime you get someone that is playing the 7th, 8th, ninth position off of the bench and he's only making $6.6 .6 million or and the following season he'll make 6.9, that is a very reasonable contract. So again, I do expect big things from Sasha. I'm probably one of the few that really likes Sasha. Maybe I know a lot of people are focused on Davion Mitchell, but the type of game that Sasha brings to the Raptors will be interesting. Again, he's not going to come in and lock up players but he's going to be someone that is going to be a really good rotational player. You're going to play him as a 78th, 9 math off the bench. And don't be surprised in case of injuries, he can really step up and really be a microwave off the bench for you. In terms of his contract and Davion's, again, if things go sideways, I always want to have a realistic approach to when we talk about players, if things go really sideways and they do the same thing that Jillian McDaniels did or even they do exactly what they did last season, then all of a sudden these contracts aren't that hard to get rid of, right? Only making about six and a half, six point eight million dollars isn't too difficult to get off of. And you know what? Worst comes to worst, the Raptors do have a lot of picks now. What you can do is package them together, send some picks, and maybe get a really good player that's making $13 million, right? So I like this contract. Also, I do want to see, I mean, with the picks the Raptors have next season as well, we saw how many people, we saw how many prospects the Raptors drafted in this year's draft class, about five, I believe, which is absolutely insane. The Raptors always have that opportunity, especially with that second round, to always treat up always, you know what, move their own pick in Portland and really move up in the draft. So I personally like this trade. I think this is an excellent trade considering Jillian McDaniels wasn't even getting minutes with the Raptors the second half of the season. You saw all the players that were injured and he still was not getting minutes. What does that tell you about Jillian McDaniels? With respect to him, I wish him the best in the Kings with the Kings, but he just was not playing really well for the Raptors. You got not only Davion Mitchell, you not only got the 45th pick, you also got Sasha. You also got Portland Trailblazers second round pick next season as well. So I give this an A+. Plus. I would give it an A, A+, plus if I could. But this is an absolute steal for the Raptors. A great trade. Obviously, the Kings did this because they get rid of some salary. It gives them the it gives them a little bit more money to spend in free agency. So personally, I like this trade for the Raptors. I'm very curious to hear what you think. Make sure to leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. And do not worry. I will be covering the rest of the prospects that the Raptors have drafted today as well. So that will be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day.